The title of the message, you can, as you can see on the screen, I'm just going to let the Lord lead it and we're going to make it happen. It's called Till the Ground. Everybody say, Till Your Ground. Oh, those screen looks nice, y'all. They look so nice. <laughs> Clap it up for the team that's been working so hard. Uh, it's, it's, it's been an amazing thing. And even some of the, the membership that's been uh, working and pitching in. Brother Mike Wolf is in the front row, y'all ready? Clap it up for him. He worked all night the last few nights trying to make it happen. Uh, so, Shakia, you know, it's, it's, he was here. It was cool. It was no, <laughs> he was here, but, uh, Minister Eric Turner been working, y'all, and I was, you know, just letting the wives know, confirm that they were, they were here in Jesus' name. They were, they were here. Uh, y'all know, uh, Daniel Jones was in here all the other, so, well, you know, they, they, they were, they were here. Well, we would not cover for them. We would tell on them very quickly. Because we believe in honoring the word of God and don't tell. Let me tell you one thing. If you're not going to be where you say you're going to be to your wife, don't say you're with me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, now, if you say you're somewhere else, and, uh, anyway, just don't say you're with me. How about that? Amen. Because we want to protect the first institution. and We want to build what God is building. We believe in family here at the fountain. Can y'all clap one more time for that? All right. I got to. I got to move. I see my man Joe made it in the house today. What's up, man? Appreciate you, man. Okay. I'm going to leave that alone, but I see you, brother. All right, cool. Y'all ready? Let's go to, I got to, uh, which scripture I want to start with, Lord? <clears throat> ah, ah. Let's go Genesis 2. It was first already, but I was going to move it to second. Can you hand me that apple juice that you got me, Denzel? Just so I can make sure I'm good. Go to Genesis 2. Thank you. Chapter 2, verse 4, King James. Hallelujah. Y'all have me all that worship and I can't even get my voice right. Y'all ready? It says, these are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. So this is the part of the Bible right after he went through, you know, let there be light and all that stuff. So let's keep going. After he made the heavens and every plant of the field before it was in the earth. Somebody said before it was in the earth. And every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. And there was, because it says, and, but watch this, there was not a man to till the ground. Can I pause right there? Uh, there was not a man to till the ground. Before I go where I'm going, I just want to show you this. Uh, we know that God made everything in, in, in Genesis chapter 1, and he, he, he laid it all out to us, and it's a second account of creation here in Genesis chapter 2. But it's saying there's certain things, there was, there was things that were, were created, but he held up something. It says he held up the plants from the ground, and he held up the herbs from growing because there was no one there to till the ground. Meaning that until someone is prepared to till the ground, there are things that God can't release or cause to grow. You follow what I'm saying? Stay with me. you got to follow this. Until the ground has someone to make it ready, then God has to hold up the things from growing. So we need a tiller to make sure the ground is set for God to produce and cause things to spring up. All right, let's keep going. I want to make sure. Uh, make sure. Uh, and, then it's, and then what does it say next? But then after that it says, but there went up a mist on the earth and water hole, excuse me, and, and watered the whole earth, all of the whole face of the ground, excuse me, and the Lord God formed a man of dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils. We heard this scripture, Bishop taught it. Let me slow down. <laughs> breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living what? Soul. Talking about having someone to till ground, needing the tiller, and he breathed his life into man, and man became a soul, living soul. Let's move on to Mark 4, chapter 3. Mark 4, chapter 3. I'm going to read this in the New King James Version. Mark 4, chapter 3. Y'all ready? It says, listen, I'm going to read about 17 verses. We're going to read about 17 verses. And let's watch this. Listen. Behold, a sower went out to sow, and it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and devoured it, and some fell on, everybody say, stony ground. Stony ground. 
where it did not have much earth. And immediately the seed sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched because it had no root. It withered away. And some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. Somebody say no crop. But the other seed, everybody say the other seed, fell on good ground and yielded a crop that sprung up, increased, and produced some 30-fold, some 60-fold, and some 100. And he said to them, he who has ears to hear, let them hear. But when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him, about the parable, and he said unto them, to you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom. Somebody say mystery of the kingdom. But to those who are outside of the kingdom, all things come in parables, so that seeing they may not see. Everybody say seeing, they don't see. And not perceive, and hearing they may hear, but not understand lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. And he said, do you not understand this parable? Y'all following with me? Reading straight from the Bible. How then will you understand all parables? The, watch this. The sower, he's explaining now, sows the word. Everybody say the word. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear... He's describing the grounds. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. Let me pause right here. I want to talk to you. Here's, Jesus is given a parable. A parable. I remember my mama taught me what a parable was when I was younger. She said a parable is an earthly illustration with a heavenly meaning. Y'all got me? So he's going to use something that we can relate to and understand to articulate a kingdom or a heavenly principle that we can correlate our, our knowledge and our growth. Does that make sense? See, it's, it's amazing because if you understand learning, in order to learn, you must be able to associate something you know with something you don't know to connect to learn something new. Does that make sense? Which is why when we're teaching multiplication, we tend to teach you addition first if you've learned that first so you can understand the new concept of multiplication. Y'all with me? This is why we teach you the sounds of the letters before we teach you to read words. Okay. Y'all going to be a good class for me? Okay. So, so Jesus is using an illustration that they understand to explain something they don't understand so that they can understand. Y'all got me? So, 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 so he talked about this sower who is going to sow. I want to make some connections for you to make sure we're on the same page. The sower sowed the same seed. But there was a different result. Everybody say the seed was the same. But the fruit was different. Which means that it's not the seed that determines the production. It's the ground that determines the production. Now the seed has to have in it what it needs, but the ground is going to determine how much out of the seed comes. Does that make sense? Clap it up if you understand what I'm saying. I got to walk you through this. Which, which Jesus is saying, and I, I thank God because ironically, last week, before I even knew I was going to teach this message, Pastor Jawan, Lord the gardener called me and she was encouraging me uh, about her, you know, saying that, you know, things are working, it's happening, you know, just, just, just being a blessing to me. And I thank God for her. Hopefully you're watching, Elder. Thank you for calling me. Um, and she was saying, and she used this scripture, ironically, Deacon Miller. She said, you know, you just got to know that when, when, you know, that one-fourth is going to get it. She's like, you got the, the stony ground, the wayside, you got the stony ground, you got those who come with the, with the thorns, and then you got the good ground. So, you know, you, you, just, you just stay focused and know that it is not a waste what you're saying, what you're doing. God is bringing up fruit in those that are good ground. I'm like, thank you, Elder. Bless me. I needed to hear that. God, glory, hallelujah, because people have you depressed. But then when I was preparing the Lord was showing me this. He says, he says, he says look at this. He says, this, she's talking about these grounds. Talking about these grounds. But then the Lord told me to tell the people that 
if you till your ground, you can change the condition of your soil. <laughs> Just because you're rocky today don't mean you can't be good ground tomorrow. So instead of me accepting that I only can get one out of four, why don't I teach the three how to become the one? Oh, I thought I was going to get more of an amen from that. Tell somebody, I want more out of what God is sowing. All right, let me finish reading you how the Lord, how Jesus, Jesus did it. Because you're the best teacher. So, so Jesus was talking to the 12 because they didn't fully get it. Jesus was like, it's okay that you don't get it now. Even though you are mine and you are the 12, you don't get it. But I'm going to rock with you because you can know. So, so come a little closer and let me explain what I mean. Because once you understand, you can get to work. Because if you were already good ground, you wouldn't have needed my explanation. So don't feel bad, because it's yours to learn. I just didn't want to give it to everybody because they weren't ready. But since you're ready, come, come, come a little closer. Anybody ready? I hear the Lord saying, come a little closer. Okay, okay, here we go. Well, okay, so, so when they hear, Satan comes and immediately takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. These, likewise, are the ones sown on stony ground. Y'all got that? Who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Anybody ever felt like that? I got it, Lord, I got it. And they have no root in themselves. Where's the root at? Uh-oh, we about to understand this. Okay, I'm sorry. They have no root in themselves. So I ain't, I'm not talking about dirt and plants. There's no root in themselves because the root goes in the ground. Okay, okay, here we go. Here we go. And so endure only for a time. Afterwards, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. They get the word. They got the word. They feel good about it. But when persecution comes or trouble arises, they stumble because the ground wasn't trite quite good enough. It was better than those who got nothing, but it wasn't deep enough for roots to take place to endure the trouble that comes in life. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Keep going. Now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desire for other things entering in choke the word out. And it becomes, watch this, unfruitful. Somebody say unfruitful. Ooh, okay, okay. Somebody say it becomes unfruitful. See, the whole purpose of sowing the seed is for the seed to produce fruit. So when God sends his word as a seed, depending on the, 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 the condition of your ground, will determine if, you're, if the word can produce fruit. So if I'm not getting fruit from the word, I need to till my ground. Is that, am I making sense to anybody? I got to figure out, Lord, what do I need to do so that when I get your word, not only do I get it, but it takes root. And that when it takes root, it can take enough root to begin to expand. And then when situations come, temptations come, I can endure them because it won't be choked out by the stuff that's going on in life. So when people are like, life happens, yes, life does happen, but my ground is so good, I got enough root so good that I can stand the rain. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Come down. But these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word, accept the word, and bear fruit. Some 30-fold, some 60, and some 100. Somebody say, till your ground. Because I got to prepare my ground to be able to produce the fruit. What is the ground? Jesus is talking about sending a word out. And he's using these grounds as a parable, illustration of our soul. What is the condition of our soul? Why is Bishop talking about programmable soul and reprogramming soul and conscious, subconscious, and conscience? He's trying to tell us how if we can work on our ground, we can get fruit out of the word that is coming out of our mind. Does that make sense? Because the word of God cannot produce fruit in ground that's not good. 
And it's not for us to feel bad about it because even the 12 disciples were struggling with it. He says, just come closer and till that ground. Because if you can work on that ground, then I can get you to be good and I can produce fruit out of your life. What is the first thing God told man to do to be fruitful and multiply? Everybody say fruitful. What does is, what is being fruitful mean? Being fruitful means <laughs> take what's on the inside, sow it, and produce something on the outside. Oh, I think we might have missed it. Every fruit has seed in it. I can enjoy the fruit, but I have a life off the seed. But I must understand, as God is sending his word as seed, the only way I can produce more fruit is based upon the condition of my soul. So I got to get my soul right. So I can continue to produce fruit to live on. Does that make sense? Somebody say, be fruitful. Why is it that I'm coming to church, listening, hearing, I, I, I don't get it at all? Or I'm getting it and then I lose it. Or I got it, I really think I got it. But then I start looking at somebody else's social media page. Or I start trying to keep up with the Joneses. And next thing I know, I'm eating my seed to necessarily look like I still got fruit. When my seed holds my future. If I till my ground. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Okay, I got to. Because y'all going to take me somewhere else. Tilling the ground. Let, let me, let me, let's, let's go. Let's, let's talk about what that is. It's not, it's not a common term. We're not a, this is not an urban uh, city. We're, 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 we're an urban city. We're not, we don't really deal with farming that much. Um, but what does it mean to till? I'm, I'm jumping down, team. Uh, 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 oh, okay. Okay. I'm going to throw you all off. Till means to work by plowing, sowing, raising crops, or in. Uh, let, let's go to tilling. Is The primary goal of tilling is to break up hard compacted soil into smaller particles, creating better air and water circulation. I get, to, I get to disrupt the ground because the ground gets dry and crusty and hard and not susceptible to new seeds. Which means that when the ground's condition is off, I can't receive what I need to grow anything different. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Oh, gosh. Okay, okay, Holy Ghost, let's rock it. Let's go to my pictures, y'all. I got, I got a, I got a, uh, I, I, in, in my house, right? Like, so I haven't uh, moved to my, to my, to my, 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 my next house yet. So I, I got to make my current house the best I can. Amen. Anybody else like that? Come on. So, so I, I'm going, but until then, I'm being a good steward. So I had, so, so, so I, I used to have this. Uh, this one guy cut my grass. He's a good, good guy. He cut my grass. But then I messed, you know, at the fountain because we got all types of gifts and sharing our gifts. We're going to do that today later. But there was this guy by the name of Brother Frank Potter. Anybody know Frank Potter? Clap it up Frank Potter. He got a sound man. He in the back here up there. Clap it up for Brother Frank Potter. Amen. Shout out to Potter's Lawn and Snow. He, he, I, hi, I hired him to come and start cutting my grass. And y'all, my grass is like carpet right now. Y'all see that? That little carpet looks, woo, if you lay down and go to sleep on that grass right there. It was so bad, I mean, it was so good, should I say. My old lawn guy, he didn't know. He, he came over my house while Frank was cutting my grass and said, man, what you doing to that grass, man? Because I used to cut that grass, and it looked like you cutting it like I cut it. But it didn't look like that when I was cutting it. And Frank was like, you know, I'm, just, I'm the green hand. That's what it is. You know, I know how I got this, I got that grace on my life, you know. Even my neighbors was looking at me like, what, 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 what is going on? Because I been here a long time and something different about your grass see because this is actually June of 2020 when this picture was taken I had just but what they didn't know what 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 the what the old landscaping guy didn't know was that a year ago I was the laughing stock of the block here's a picture from June 2019 no 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 nope that you you want too fast go back that's, that's, that's back to good. Go back to right there. That don't look like the same grass. Got that, like the dirt up there. It was a big old bush right there. It was the grass, same location, 
different looking products. I wish I had pictures, but what they don't remember was after this picture, I became the laughing stock of the block because I had all my dirt flipped up, all my grass flipped up, all my grass turned over. It was flipping, it was nothing but dirt on my whole front lawn. Everybody else was cutting their grass, and it wasn't like Bishop said they would sweep their dirt because I couldn't get the grass done. I was sweeping my dirt because I had a vision for my grass. And I understood that if I didn't do something to the soil, to the ground, then the grass would stay in the same condition. So people who had been feeding their grass for a while, they was looking better than me, but I discovered that if I turn up the grass and then I put some chemicals in the grass, I could change the condition of the soil and my ground would produce a better quality product. But they didn't know that when they was looking at me like this and laughing at me a year earlier. And I wish you could see that front part. You could see where it's all dirt. Everything was dirt. But they didn't know when they flipped it, they was adding the chemicals. And they was adding this and adding that. And I had to be patient that even though right now you're laughing at me, if you can wait a year later like you saw, you're going to be ready to sleep on my grass. It's going to be so good. You can go to the, to the, to the other picture real quick. Uh, and then that's what it looked like before scissor hands got to it, which is nice and full and healthy. But then y'all saw when Frank cut it, they had them nice lines and it was beautiful. And it was like, man, this is cute. And I was like, yeah, you know, because I tilled my ground. I took the time to go through the ugly, to flip over what wasn't good, to add what needs to be good so I can produce something that stays good. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And not only am I going to till my ground, I'm going to make sure that my whole family plays a part and they understand that it's work that has to be done. Maybe they can't get in on the early parts, but they're going to get in on some parts and put some work in. Can you go to the next part? Play the video for me real quick. And this is in 2020, but y'all can see we had to get the kids out there and, and getting into the yard. So this is how you, you plant stuff, and this is how you sow stuff, and this is how you move stuff, and this is how you get a product in the future with work in the present. Look at Mikai. Hey, that's in 2020. He don't look nothing like that. Now that boy like 6'12". <laughs> but... <laughs> But we were conditioning the ground to increase the fruit. Clap it up if you understand. Okay. All right. So Bishop has been talking about our souls. Our souls is the, our, 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 is the root and the source and the ground of our lives. When these words go forth, we're teaching the word, we're preaching the word. God is sending his word to the Holy Spirit. Everything is going to be determined by the condition of your ground, the condition of your soul. So we have to learn to do some soul work. Does that make sense? So Bishop has given us the process, the program, and then you're like, man, that's a lot of information. And man, that sounds deep. It's so that you can maximize everything that you're learning in life because you're reconditioning the ground that gets sown into to produce better fruit. This is why you could be sitting next to somebody who's getting nothing and your life is being changed. Same word, different ground. And we want to blame the word when God says it ain't the word, it's the ground. And the only evidence of good ground is fruit. Yeah, we got, we got to. It's not, did you say amen? It's not that you receive it with gladness. God talked about that. Jesus talked about that. Did you see that? Did you receive? Oh, that was, oh, hallelujah. Yes. Is that stony or is that good on the, in the making? It's not could I repeat it next week because that could be growing with thorns and then next time once somebody says something, something happens, it gets choked out. We had a good counseling session, but then you're back to the same place two weeks later. It's because it got choked out. Jesus is saying this is normal. This is the conditions of the ground. But if my people will understand it, then they could just work on the ground. I can get them together. Somebody say, work on me, work on me. All right, how do I do that? If I say, dig it up. Dig it up. If the ground is not producing, dig it up. What is the ground? That's my mindset, my thought pattern, the way I'm perceiving. I got to dig that thing up it's because, it's, because it's not producing. So I got to dig. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently, if I say diligently, Seek him. Now, we learned all these principles. How many notes we take last week? How many? Bishop preached 90 minutes, and it was all good. 
How many times do we go back and watch it? How much time do we meditate over the last seven days? Because that's the digging up. Or did I just receive it and leave it? No, I got to reprogram this thing because I got to realize that the way I'm functioning is not producing fruit. I'm tired, right, of being frustrated. I'm tired of feeling like, man, I'm not doing anything to do. Greatness is in you. It is not too late for you. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You know, I, was, I was talking to my wife the other day, and uh, I was saying it's, 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 the Lord has given me a grace, uh, given us a grace, but in a particular conversation to, to, to deal with, with men and talk to men. And, and, and my wife was saying, she, she was saying it's because you have a way to share and talk to the good in the person. Because the good is still in there. But the problem is, if the good is not fed, the ground, the, the, it'll get choked out. I don't think anybody goes into a relationship planning to be terrible. Can we be honest? But a lot of times it ends up that way because it got choked out, but that desire is still in there. Nobody comes to God planning to not listen to anything he says. But it gets choked out by the cares of the world, by the temptation of the And God is like, yo, just remind my people, and which is why you get so encouraged, because you know that you are still great. But life is still choking it out of you. And God is like, I'm not mad at you. Come closer. Let's just till your ground. It's some weeds in there. It's then dried up in there, all these experiences. Bishop talked about those experiences, the environment you grew up in, the references, information, everything he was teaching. I can't reteach his message, but all that has been tainting your soul, and your ground is hard, and you're listening to this word, but it can't spring up, and you're losing hope. But God says, you're not the problem, just deal with the ground. It's not because you can't. It's not because you're unable. It's not because you're not chosen. You just got some work to do. You got to dig it up. We can't be lazy about this. We can't be passive about this. We got to get in and do the work to change the fruit. <laughs> the guys, and I, I wish the, the, people, the people that we hired, I don't, they probably, you know, we, we, you know, sometimes we find the best deal. But he, the guy was so passionate. He knew so much about dirt. Like, bro, I didn't know it was that much to dirt. I mean, he was telling me so many things about my dirt. And he was so educated. He would not stop talking. I'm just like, what is it going to cost for you to fix my dirt? Oh, thank you, Jesus. But we just want our dirt to be fixed without no cost and without no work. So I either had to do the work or pay the cost. Okay, that's okay. I'm going to teach it. And you're going to get it. <laughs> Unless you're brown bad. But I'm working on it. And I watched them with a pickaxe because I don't think they had budget to go buy a tiller or rent one from Home Depot. And with a pickaxe, two brothers, day and night. I wish I had videos because I was amazed. Like, what are they doing? Boom, pulling it out. Pulling, uh, pulling it out. Every, I mean, turning over the whole thing. Pulling it out. I'm like, man, that's some work. But as soon as they got finished, he reshaped it back and everything started to grow. Everybody say, dig it up. You got to dig out that pain. Dig out that unforgiveness. Dig out that doubt. You got to dig out that worry. You can't get out there and just, all right, I'm tired. You can't go out there and say, Lord, fix it in Jesus' name. You got to dig it out. We just want to put some water on it and some holy oil. No, you got to dig it out. That's why Bishop was talking about meditation, having a word. You got to spend some, you got to make some time. Or be comfortable with your lawn staying the same. You must believe that he is. You must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder if you diligently seek him. We got to believe that he has what we don't have. And the scripture goes to give examples about what faith looks like. And, but Isaiah 55 and 8 says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond your, anything you could imagine. 
which means I got to dig out mine and add in his. But it's got to go into my soul. But I can't do that if I'm still questioning if God is God and what he says is going to happen. So I got to decide that I'm going to dig out what I got and take what he has. I'm not going to try to make him fit into me. I'm going to dig it out and say, God, make me new. If I don't believe that, I'm wasting my time. I'm going to keep the same ground. Does that hear what I'm saying? All right. Take his life and drop the one you was building. Okay. That's what Bishop, okay. Why? Third John 1 and 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper, right? Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always, I'm sorry, wish that you prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper. Watch this. Let me give you this. Philippians 2 and 12. I don't know who's taking notes, but if you're going to do some work, you might as well pick up the tools. <laughs> Philippians 2 and 12 says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Watch this. Here's where I'm going. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. What is he saying? It's some work you got to put in. You got to work out your salvation. Yeah, you saved by grace, but you got to work out the salvation by fixing the ground that the salvation is poured into so the salvation can produce fruit out of your life. <laughs> Bishop, am I saying something? I'm trying to say something. You, you got to put the work in. To change the ground so that the salvation can have benefit and fruit while you're on earth. The salvation is not just for heaven. The salvation is for the moment you get salvation. And if I get salvation on earth, then I should start seeing some things being saved that was dead before I got saved. Some things being raised that was dead before I got saved. It's for right, everybody say it's for right now. trying my best, preacher. I'm trying my best. Which means it's, if there's some dead things in my life, I got to dig it up and put in his thoughts where my thoughts were. All right. I need to, ooh, I'm doing, ah, uh, okay. 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 See, because not only does he want us blood washed, he wants us brainwashed. Soul washed. That's why he says, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless. As come, I want to watch all of you. We know this scripture, Romans 12 and 2, be not conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your what? Watch this one. Ephesians 5, 25. Husbands, love your wives. We love this part. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Watch this. That he might sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of the word. Everybody say washing of the word. That's about washing your mind with the washing of the word. This phrase means that the word of God purifies our thoughts, our motives, and our conscience. We've been hearing about our conscience. This, this word purifies our thoughts. Y'all see that? Maybe you don't see it, but listen to it. Your thoughts, your motives, and your conscience of those who absorb and obey it. If I absorb the word and I obey the word, it will purify my thoughts, my motives, and my conscience. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Bishop taught us conscious mind, subconscious mind, conscience. That's our soul. That's our makeup. The word, if I absorb it and obey it, it will purify my motives. Y'all get what I'm saying? Okay, okay, keep going, keep going, keep going. The word of God can also help keep the heart clean by pointing out areas that need confession and renunciation. Y'all see that? A couple scriptures and I'm going to show you and I'm going to get out your way. Proverbs 20 and 4. The slugger will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg and harvest and have nothing. I'm going to read it again and read it slower, Drew. The slugger will not plow. Plowing is a part of tilling. So the person, sluggard means lazy. Person who won't work. The sluggard, scripture, Proverbs 20 and 4, the sluggard won't plow. It didn't say the sluggard won't listen. It didn't say the sluggard won't come to church. It didn't say the sluggard won't sing a song. It said the sluggard won't, won't plow because the plow is the work. Digging up the things that has been comfortable and set in my mind that has to come out for me to produce something different. 
changing the way I see my situation. I have to dig it. Everybody say dig it up. The plugger, the sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore, he shall beg and harvest and have nothing. So while other people are having harvest, the slugger would have nothing because he wouldn't put the work in. Look at your neighbor and say, we got work to do. Because if, if I won't put the work in, I'm going to be sitting here hating on somebody else who put the work in. Proverbs 28 and 19. He that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread. But he that followeth after vain persons shall have poverty enough. Everybody say, my ground matters. I'm, uh, I need some help, and I didn't, I didn't play this out, but Bishop started it with these examples. Can I see your mic, Bishop? Y'all all right? Anybody getting anything out of the word? Clap your hands real quick for me. Oh, Jesus. Can, can you stand with me? Because you look nice. We both got on blue. You know what I'm saying? You, you look a little better, but don't tell nobody. No, I'm just playing. Amen. So, I got $100. Anybody need, want $100? All right. Everybody say, my ground. My ground is important. Because your ground determines your life. By ground, we're talking about soul, our soul's condition, our mindset, the way we process. Bishop talk, talk, taught us about killing the ants and stopping the lies. Automatic negative thoughts, limited ideas entertained. We got to kill all of that. We got to till our ground. Dig up that negativity. Dig up that worry. Dig up that doubt. Dig up everything that's keeping you. Dig up that unforgiveness because all that stuff gets in your mind and determines your life. Y'all hear me? All right, let's go back. Anybody want $100? Can you be can you be me? You just gotta say, anybody want a hundred dollars to hold it up? Anybody want a hundred dollars? Free. Hundred dollars. Everybody say your soul. Who do you think he is? I don't need his hundred dollars. I got my own hundred dollars. Anybody telling me what I can have? You think I don't like need him? Everybody say your soul. Stay there. Go ahead. Anybody want hundred dollars? Oh, that is so nice. God bless, God bless, Pastor. He up there. Amen. I'm, I'm not quite ready yet, though, for that. But I'm glad you want the hundred dollars. Whatever her soul condition was, it was beating everybody else. She was like, I ain't got time for none of that. <laughs> One more time. Anybody want hundred dollars? Stay right there. That is so nice. I mean, just that's just a bless. Stay there. That is so such a blessing. The pastor would decide to bless somebody. That's so sweet. Different soul. Let's try it again. Anybody want hundred dollars? Man, he know the Lions game come on in a minute. God Lee, bro. <laughs> I'll give him a hundred dollars if he shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Same action, different souls. It's not what it is, it's who you are that determines your life. That's good. And while one person is complaining, somebody else is receiving. Come on, Sister Cynthia, where you at? Take her that $100 for me, please. I need, I need that mic. Take, 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 take her that $100. Thank you. Clap it up for her, y'all. I'm, I'm showing you that your soul is extremely important. It is the determinant of your life. I used to teach that life is 10% what happens to you and 90% of how you respond because how you respond is based upon your soul's condition to what you perceive. Lolita, come here. Just a little bit faster. Y'all clap for Lolita. How you doing? Looking nice. Uh, turn around right here. Is she pretty, y'all? I got news. She's single, too. Man, she is fine, though. <laughs> Trying to see. I wonder if I can catch her before she leaves. That means I probably can't leave out of church as soon as it's over because I always be leaving out rushing them and I probably should stick around and get a chance to get my blessing. <laughs> she's 
she is pretty, but man, I ain't got time for no pretty girl, because pretty girls, everybody else will be trying to talk to my girls, and I gotta worry about what they gonna say, man. I just, I just don't need that temptation. I need somebody that, you know, we could be good, but I ain't trying to deal with no extra stuff, like, because when you got a pretty girl, then you gotta worry about a guy, you walk in a movie, somebody like, hey, how you doing? I'm like, man, I ain't got time for that. I don't want them problems. So if I just find me somebody that's not as pretty, then I ain't gotta worry about all that extra stuff. Now, y'all may say that's crazy, but I promise you that was a real conversation I had with somebody. I promise you. Real co- Brother really told me that. I said, what? <laughs> hey, bro, you really think like that? You want an unattractive person to be with so that nobody else would want them so that you ain't got to. That is the dumbest. But obviously, I couldn't tell him he was dumb. I'm like, hmm. Thank you, Lord. You can, you can go sit back down. <laughs> Clap it up, fellow leader. You got to come to the bazaar if you're single and you want to see if she likes you. But anyway, I have more examples. I'm gonna Clap it up if you understand what I'm saying. The condition, I'm just trying to make it make sense. Your life is predicated on your soul's condition. And what did, and Bishop taught us the things that contribute to the, contribute to the, the condition of our soul. Who we hanging around? What we doing? Ooh, it's so much I could just, man, I, I want to give you so many examples about how, your, how our souls get in our way. Okay. Uh, okay. Got to get to this. Somebody said, recondition your soul. I got to dig it up. I got to start getting the word, meditating on it, like Bishop says, so they can change my mind, right? The Bible says you're the head and not the tail. You're above and ever beneath. The, we stop expecting success. We find ourselves, a lot of times, a lot of us, we find ourselves finding ways to accommodate the lack of success instead of fighting for success. The Bible says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations for the trying of your faith work is patience. Let patience have its perfect and complete work. It's usually the entire complete want nothing. I got to go fast. It's in the Bible though. Sometimes your struggle is to make you better if you've been conditioned to endure the storm. Some ground, when the storm comes or the sun gets too hot because it hasn't been conditioned, then the fruit can't grow, as the scripture said. But when you condition your soul properly, obstacles don't destroy you. They just give you a reason to grow because success is the only option. Peyton, come here. My daughter, uh, ain't she pretty, y'all? Clap it up for her. She got a little friend now, y'all. It's like, nah, he cool. I, y'all say, hey, Sean, what's up? He came to church, so I'm, he trying to something. Watch this. He don't know this, but he about to find out right now. Yesterday, two days ago, Peyton like, my man needs some money to get my hair done. My mom was like, mm-mm, I just gave you money two weeks ago, and somehow that, that, that style didn't even last two weeks. And, and before that, I just spent, this, it's been like about $500 on your hair in the last month. That's more than I spent on my hair. She like, but what you want me to do? <laughs> See, what also y'all don't know was that her, her, her boo had a game, and she had to go and try to, you know, represent, so she couldn't. She like, mom, we got to figure out something, because I'm committed to looking good. I'm trying to show you something, but the problem is what normally worked couldn't work because she wasn't paying her this time, and she like, this is a problem. So now she had to decide what was going to be the condition of her soul. Was she going to just turn over and cry, or was she going to figure out how to fight through the opposition? I came home later that day, and she looked like this. So I'm like, I know my wife did not just... Check the accounts and it, it wasn't there. I'm like, whoo. So I go try to say, did you pay her? Did you give her that money? She was like, no. I said, pay him. What'd you do? She was like, I said, you did it. She was like, I did it. I said, you did it. I said, when you learn to do that? TikTok. You mean to tell me I've been spending all this money on you to get hair and you could have went to TikTok? 
and did your own hair. But if it wasn't for her commitment to a vision, she would have never overcome the obstacle that. You can go sit down, baby. Because she had a motivation that was stronger than her opposition. Whereas when we quit, see, because her soul wouldn't let her, she couldn't see herself not looking how she wanted to look. And that motivation caused creativity of God on the inside to take root. And next thing you know, she started going to TikTok, going to friends, watering those thoughts, and all of a sudden came out with a tree. And said, look at me now. But for some reason, we find ourselves giving up on the vision, giving up on the wholeness. It's just too much. I, can't, I ain't got time for this. It's like, that's because you're not committed to winning when, when we're supposed to win. I'm getting out of here. Where are the people of God? The people of God stand up. Clap your hands for the people of God. I want to charge you. Drew, get me out of here. I want to charge you. It's time to start acting like it. We got this thing I say, me and my God say, we win in every area. We don't settle. All we do is win. Why? Because greater is he that lives in us than he that lives in the world. You got to stop conforming to your opposition. I know they get on your nerves. So what? Get up the next day and figure out how to figure it out. Pastor, man, I'm tired. Yeah, it's opposition. Figure out how to figure it out because greater is he that lives in you than he that's in the world. And it's time that we get back committed to the vision of success. The Bible says in Joshua, study this book of the law. Let it not depart out of their mouth. Then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. If I get the word in me, if I dig up my ground, every excuse, every experience, every hardship that keeps justifying failure, I got to dig it up and say, what does God say about it? And then put that in and say, I will win. You will be healed. You will save your family. You will be successful. You will be okay. You will start over. You will build right. You have to commit that I will win. No more am I going to settle and figure out how to make do where I am and figure out how to live. No, I am the child of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I will not settle. My business will blow up. My life will come together. I'll figure out how to communicate better. I'll figure out how to love more. I'll figure out how to forgive. I'll figure out how to step up. I'll figure out how to serve. I'll figure out how to be the best I can be. God did not create me for me to stay stagnant. God did not invest in me for me to stay down. I am not going to be negative. I am not going to stop believing. I'm going to dig up and till my ground. I'm not giving up. I'm not settling because of the years I lost. I'm not settling because I get on my nerves. God invested too much in me. So let, let the opposition come. Let the struggle come. Because the trying of my faith don't work patience. I know we get into it every time we talk. We're going to talk again. Because God called me. I don't care how many people walk past me. The one that's walking to me is coming. And I'm going to stay ready. I don't care what the report says. How many people told me that was wrong. I'm telling you, I'm going to do it. I am the workmanship of Christ. I'm a new creature. All throughout the Bible, God's people were winners. They went through trials, but they came out victorious. You are not, you are no longer a victim of your lineage. He that is in Christ is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 
You're not a victim of your lineage, which means that you don't have to be stuck to that. Dig it up and replace it. Add the chemicals you need. Get the words you need. You're not a victim of generational curses. You're no longer a victim of the iniquity lines. You've been redeemed. Your history has changed. I don't got time. But when the king conquers new territory, the history comes with the conquering. Your history is not that of failure. Your history now is that of Jesus. Bishop said, we got a new DNA. You may suffer persecution, but persecution is not, it's not failure. God gave it. He said, persecution is not failure. It's haters mad because they can't be you, understand you, or control you. That's why they're talking about you. Because they can't be you, understand you, or control you. That's why they're saying, you stupid for going back. You stupid for trying again. You stupid for figuring it out. You stupid for fighting. That's because you can't be me, understand me, or control me. But I understand that I am more than a conqueror. Through Christ. I'm getting out your way. I got to cast down every imagination according to 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. Every high thing, that every thought that exhausts itself against my success, I got I to gotta bring that into captivity and defeat it. Pull it up, dig it up, flip it over, and do something that's going to make it better. I was studying plants, kid. I'm, I'm trying. I'm getting out. Y'all can stay there. I'm, I'm getting out right here. I just want to read this. It's going to sound deep. It might be sound smart, but I just looked it up. Hydropo hydro hydro hydrotropy. Mm, there you go. Hydrotropy. Hydrotro hydrotropy is an organic solvent, free solubilizing approach. It is basically a molecular phenomenon occurring by blending poorly soluble solutes with the large amounts of hydro hydro hydrotropes, resulting in an enhancement of the aqueous solubility of poorly soluble solutes. Stay with me. Hydroptropy is an organic solvent-free approach. It is basically a molecular phenomenon occurring by blending poorly soluble solutes with a large amount of hydrotropes, resulting in an enhancement of the aqueous solubility of poorly soluble solutes. Hydrotropes are highly water-soluble organic salts, able to increase the solubility in water of other organic substances, normally not insoluble. Why did I read that? If my ground is not good, if I'm struggling with my thought process, I got to do something that's similar to something called hydrotropy. And what that means is you take a lot of something that is soluble or dissolvable or flowing, and you flood something that's not soluble to increase the solubility of the thing that was not soluble. What am I saying? If I'm struggling to change, if I'm struggling with my soul, I need to find some people, come here, to get around me who are soluble. Come here. I need to surround myself with people who are fighting to walk this walk. Come here. Fighting to live this. I need some people to come to me. I need some people around me. I need to flood myself with people who are soluble. Because I'm struggling to change. And according to the theory, if I surround myself with people, come closer, who are able to be soluble, moldable, liquid, transformed, it will increase my ability to be able to make change and I can become who I need to be. So my soul is struggling prior to me getting help, and I'm trying, Pastor Matt, to dig it up. I'm trying to change my thoughts. You know, just surround yourself. If you're struggling in your marriage, surround yourself with some happily married people. If you survive, you're struggling with your identity, find somebody who is strong in their identity. If you're struggling with your career, find somebody who's working hard. If you're struggling in your health, find somebody who's working hard and surround yourself with them so they can help Increase the situation and the circumstance and the atmosphere that will begin to break down the solid ground. And when they break your ground, then you can begin, the water can begin to flow. 
and your roots can begin to expand. And then it can begin to go towards water, and you can begin to grow towards the light, which is Christ. And you'll begin to come something that you've never been. It's you don't have to do this alone. You can go back. You don't have to do this by yourself. But what you do have to do is decide that you will not quit. Decide that you will become so that you can consistently do so that you can have. And it won't happen if you don't till the ground of your soul. Put your hands together. God bless you. You may be seated. You can be seated all over the room. I'm, I'm getting out of here. People of God, don't give up. You still can be everything you saw. And I understand that life experiences, people's opinions, let down from others, your own faults and mistakes. They, they, they work on you, make your ground hard, but it's time to dig up and till that ground. Make it poke holes in it so the water of the word can flow through it better. Make room for the roots to expand. There's so much I can go in here, but if you're here, I don't even, I'm not even here to give you this long prayer or deep thing. If I need, if the kingdom of God needs you to dream again, to believe again, and to fight again. We are his representation. And it is not that he is not giving us the answers. It's that we are not receiving them and digging up our old ground. And if you're here today, some way, somehow, you say, Pastor Matt, I, I hear you. And I'm, I'm ready to make a commitment to believe again. I'm ready to put the work in. I'm ready to fight for this life. I, I don't want to just exist. I know Bishop tells us if you're going to go to hell, go on a first class ticket, not, a, not, in the back of the, not in the back of the plane. But my thing is if I'm going to go and be in the kingdom of God, I'm going to do that first class too. I don't want to just make it in and be like, whoo, I made it. I want to hear what it say, well done. You fought until you won. You believed against all odds. You had every excuse to quit. But you put my word in and found strength. If you're here and ask anything like what you want to declare, will you move from the three force to the one force and be good ground? I want to be good ground. I want to take this word and I want to plant it in my life and dig up the old ways that wasn't working and be one that produces fruit. Is there one? Clap for her. The sower went forth to sow. He scattered seed all over the ground. Some seed fell by the wayside. Some fell on rocky ground. Some fell among thorns. But some fell on good ground. The word today has been the same. Which seat do you sit in? What is the condition of your soul? And are you willing to become good ground? This is not a call for salvation. This is a call to be good ground.
word says you can preach till we blue in the face. But it's the ground that makes all the difference. Who's willing to do the work to dig up the ground that's been canceling your growth? That's what we're asking. That's what we're asking. Digging up the ground, like I said, may, may mean I got to look ugly for a while while I figure this out. And I'm willing to exchange my thoughts for his. Because his word says, as we, as we read earlier, this is what all these scriptures mean. His thoughts are higher than mine. His ways are higher than mine. God, I, I've been holding on to mine for a long time. But I'm ready to till my ground. Instead of growing a little, I want to per, do the work that causes much fruit. Fruit that will last. 20 more seconds here. God be God, serve him. Hell be bail. I'm talking to the person who may have felt like it was too late. The person who began to accommodate their struggle instead of challenging them. person who began to settle in the dysfunction instead of believing the excellence. I want to be good ground. The person who felt like sitting on the sideline was cool and God called you to so much more. If I'm going anywhere, I want to go first class. I want to go first class. And I discovered that when I read the word, God never had the desire for me to go and not shine. Well, if I had time, I'll read you the scripture. Somebody sold us the lie that we were supposed to just exist and make it through. That's not in the word. We're supposed to thrive. Our homes should look the best. Our marriages should look the best. Our, our, our values should be the best. Our work ethic should be the best. Our business should be the best. If you're a nurse at the hospital, your care should be the best. If you're a teacher, your teaching should be the best. Whatever it is that you're assigned to do, wherever it is you're assigned to be, you're supposed to thrive at it in every space. I'm constantly talking to the team. Like, we're building this daycare. We got to be the best. Track the progress. Show the growth. Show what's happening. We have to be the best because we're representing the king. Everything that you do should be the best. When I looked at my daughter, I was proud. I said, girl, you look good. You look the best. She didn't throw it together. She figured out how if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it the best. And all I'm saying is, no matter what comes against you, commit to the best. Is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything? Why don't we? Can I use you? You don't have to. Uh, 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 maybe... March, I was talking to Zell. He's working, doing his thing. Him and his wife, great jobs. I won't give all the details, but let me give you this detail. At that time, they had four houses, right? Four, four rental property houses, right? And then I think it was like somewhere in the middle of the year. When, 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 was, when, when was the last month you had four? What month was that? Maybe March. I, said, I guess it was March, April, somewhere up in there. And then Zell told me, okay, he said, man, I'm trying to have 20 by the end of the year. 
I said 20. You got, you got four, and you had those for a long time. I mean, it's great to jump out, but I'm like, to 20? Like, the guy who I knew was doing it the most was at 20. He said by the end of the year, I'm trying to get to 20. I'm going to get to 20. He, he was like, it's a done deal. I said, man, what, was you even saved two years ago? <laughs> he was crazy enough to uproot all limiting thoughts. What Bishop say? Stop the lies. Limited ideas when you entertain those limitations. Oh, I got to get out of here. Dug him up and said, you know what he told me the other day? It blessed my life. He said, hey, man, if I, if, if, if I just see somebody do it, then I know it's possible with man. He's like, so when they could do it, I could do it. Why can't I do it if they could do it? But then now it's either they can't do it, I can't do it. Because with man, it's impossible. With God, all things are possible. Okay, watch this. All I'm saying is it is now about to be the end of October. How many we got? He's pausing because he's counting. Age, man, how many you got? 20, so you got 20, 20, and we, we're not at December yet. We're not at November yet. And we have some pending. So we already at 20, we're already going over 20, and we ain't even got to the 10th month, and we started in the third, fourth month. Why? Because I took the limits off, and I didn't allow somebody else's thought process to limit what was possible to me. you like, well, I don't have any, but if I can go from three to 20 in nine months, not even, six months, you can start today and be good by March. But many of us would have thought that's impossible to do. But we don't even dream because our souls won't allow us to. And God said, I did not die for that. I paid too much for you to buy so little. But today, we say, Lord, open my eyes again. I believe. I'll trust. Come on, you can be clapping better than that. All right, I'm not, it's not a deep prayer because it's your work. It's not our work. It's not the prayer's work. It's your work. But my challenge to you is to dream bigger. See bigger. Believe bigger. I don't know what you do, but whatever you do, there's room to be better at it. Oh, God. Father, we thank you for your word. We will do the work. Till our ground. Everything that creates a limitation or negativity, it will come, but it won't prosper. When it comes, we will bring it into captivity. We will say, no, that is not my reality. We will dig it up and replace it with your word. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and never beneath. I'm the lender and not the borrower. Greater is he that lives in me than he that lives in the world. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You got to begin to declare the word over your life. What Bishop say? Meditate on it. He said, say it. Say it. You got to say it till you believe it. And when you believe it, you start seeing it happen because you're doing something. Get that on you. What is it that you're committing to accomplish against every obstacle? You don't want to give me no money? So what? I don't got enough money to buy fruit? I got enough to buy seeds. No, I just said something. I don't know if you heard me. Maybe I can't buy the house, but I can buy a book on real estate. I can buy a book on loans. If I can't buy the fruit, I can buy the seed. If I get the seed, I can grow the fruit. If I grow the fruit, I get more seed. But I got to believe that the harvest is mine. Father, we thank you. We praise you. Holy Spirit, you're the one doing the teaching. You're the one doing the seed sowing. We're just trying to condition our ground. You said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and we shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. 
your word says, he that lacked wisdom, let him ask. And if we ask you, you will give us the wisdom and you will abrade us not. You will hold back nothing. If we're crazy enough to believe you, you're faithful enough to perform. And we will look every obstacle, every fall in the face and say, you cannot stop what God is doing in me. I'm closing with this scripture because this is what we meditate on. Because he who began a good work in me is faithful to complete it until the coming of the Lord. And today starts my destiny. And since it started, it shall be completed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hands together all over the room. I'm done, but just so we can make sure, is that if there's anybody here who wants to give your life to Christ or you want additional prayer or you want to rededicate or join the church, any of those things, can you just come now so we can take you in the back and release those who are starting their journey towards destiny? But can you just not move yet for me, guys? Anybody else? who want to give your life to God. Because the principles of the word don't apply unless you're in the family. Clap for this brother right here. Come on, man. It's so crazy. Because you can sit up under the word and get nothing. But when the Holy Spirit draws you, it's because God want to give you everything. I declare that your greater is coming. Prepare for it. The greatest sign of faith is preparation. Oh, man, that's a whole other lesson. But, God, I thank you for this man. Open his eyes to dream and know that with you, all things are possible. His healing is possible. His transformation is possible. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can you head that way? It's a brother standing over by the door. You see him waving at you, man. The rest of you may go back to your seats. God bless you. Your future looks better already. I got to get out, y'all. Clap your hands. I'm, God bless you.